Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. And uh, Albany, Georgia, so famous, home of Paula Dean and Ray Charles and Buster Posey and Luke Bryan and Philip Phillips and Jimmy Carter's from around here. And who knows? I can't even think of who else is from around here. But glad the Holy Ghost. This is where the Kendrick brothers make those Christian movies, Courageous and the War Room and all this. Anyhow, we're going to look at Jesus in the book of Matthew. And maybe most of this you'll probably know. Some of it you may not. Let's let, do an examination of the identity of Jesus. When Jesus, this tax collector, I'm excuse me, Matthew, this tax collector, Jesus, not the tax collector, Matthew, this tax collector that is writing under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and some of the things that he says about Jesus and the identity of Jesus Christ. And the first is found in verse 21 of chapter 1. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, all caps, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, I love the fact that it's in all caps, because when you go to the Old Testament, what do you find in all caps, like over 6,000 times? The term Lord, L-O-R-D, Jehovah. He shall save his people. They're saying, this is Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah. So his people. And uh, so he's Jehovah. And then verse 23 really brings this into clarity. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So they'll call his name, which identifies his person. Jesus is God with us. It's Jehovah salvation, Jehovah our Savior. And so Jesus is Jehovah. Verse uh, 2 of of, of uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 2. It says, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now, you don't worship anything but God Almighty. Now, you can study Second Temple Jewish monotheism very hard, and you might find some references to certain groups within Judaism and uh, early uh, Jewish religion there that might have exalted Metatron or Michael or anything like that. You know, not like the Jehovah's Witnesses, not like Seventh-day Adventists, not like uh, the Mormons, whoever else, you know, exalts Michael uh, to Jesushood. But, and even some of the patriarchs, David, Abraham being chief among them, if I'm not mistaken. But they never would worship like you'd worship God. But here, these people that came from the east where Daniel was over, you know, he was a very high-ranking official both in Babylon and in Persia, three Hebrew children. Then you had Esther and Mordecai, once again in Persia, a very high-ranking official. So they knew about this, and it was something in the Old Testament, Numbers 24, 17, the star, Balaam prophesying there, come to worship him. So they knew from the Old Testament that Messiah was supposed to be God. And so when you read words like Son of God, Christ, they were had an expectation of a divine Messiah. I think Raymond Brown has a book out by that name, the divine Messiah. And then verse 11 and of chapter 2, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And notice, you know, Mary, Joseph didn't try to say, You pagans, what are you doing worshipping my son? It's just a human. No, he was God. And that's why they could worship him as God. Verse 15, and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have I called my son. Spoken of the Lord, it is spoken of God. And uh, Jesus is God. That's quoting, uh, what is it, 11 1 of Hosea. All right. Um, let's keep going. Some other things. The identification of Jesus Christ. Uh, 3 3 of Matthew, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Jehovah, make his path straight. If you go to Isaiah 40, where he's quoting, it's, it's talking about Jehovah and Elohim. Jesus is Jehovah and Elohim. Yep. 
All right, verse 11 of Matthew chapter 3. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. Now, who is this? It was said of John the Baptist that of those born of women, there was none greater. But then if you're born again, you're greater than the greatest that's not born again, according to Scripture. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Well, who's the Holy Ghost baptizer? The Father. Wait until you be endued with the promise of the Father. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It's the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. All right. So, and then verse 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he, Jesus, will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner and will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So who's the eternal judge? God. Go to John 5. Go to Revelation 20, 21, 22. Who's the God? But it says Jesus is going to burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Why? Because he's God. He's sitting on the throne of God. Revelation 3, verses 20 and 21. Read them. All right. If you so desire. 316 of Matthew. Jesus when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And when you go to John chapter 5, you find that dove, it says Spirit of God, is the Father. He's saying, you've never heard his voice, baptism, nor seen his shape, baptism, at any time. And verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. God is omnipresent. He was in heaven on the throne and in the man Christ Jesus. Oneness of God. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus, he's fighting the devil. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You take that one of two ways, you know, don't jump off because you don't want to, of the temple because you don't want to tempt the Lord your God. But Jesus is also saying, I'm the Lord your God. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. You can't tempt me, devil. <laughs> All right. Verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hit, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So again, he said, here's all the, the riches of the world, the kingdom, the power thereof, if you'll fall down and worship me. But then he says, unto him, he's talking to the devil right here, get thee hint, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship, thou, Satan, shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he was looking at God in flesh. All right. So let's keep going here. Some other passages that talk about uh, the deity of Jesus in the book of Matthew. Um, let's see, verse 9 of, of chapter 6. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. Uh, hallowed be thy name. Remember, the Father was in Jesus Christ, Father in heaven. All right. Um, let's go through some more. Let's go through some more. 721. Jesus is claiming to be God here. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, God, God, Kyrios, Kyrios, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, but was also in Jesus Christ. See, people try to humanize the Spirit of God and limit him to one place spatiality. And, you know, we can get into talks about center of consciousness and all this. But the same Spirit that was in heaven, the Father, was also in Jesus Christ. For in him, Jesus, dwelleth current all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Not a part, not a third, not a seventh, not one of 33 million in Hinduism. All the fullness of Godhead bodily, and you're complete in Him. So He's saying to get to heaven, you got to say, Jesus, your Lord, Lord, 
Nobody can say that Jesus is the Lord, one God, not Jesus Lord, Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 12, and uh, is that 3? And then Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you uh, believe in your, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, the one that Jesus is God, he's both God and man. That's another thing that confuses people. Well, you're Gnostic or you're Patropassion. No, it was the humanity. It was the sonship who died. It was the flesh that died, that was weak, that was tired but he was God he was also God incarnate God in flesh so he said but not even confessing him as God will get you to heaven think about that for a little while on your plan of salvation that doesn't even get you into heaven many will say unto me in that day Lord Lord we confessed you as God have we not prophesied in that name He's saying, I'm Jehovah. In the Old Testament, he said, thus saith Jehovah. Just saith Yahweh, some would say. Just saith, thus saith the Lord. We prophesied. Thus saith Jesus. Same thing. Jehovah of the Old Testament, Jesus of the New Testament. Very obvious. And uh, we might do some teaching with a whiteboard and just make it more plain sometime. But I enjoy just going through scripture like this. And in thy name have cast out devils. Because he's God. He's the creator of those fallen angels. <laughs> and in thy name done many wonderful works. In God's name. You didn't do it in Judaism and under any other name except the name of God. You did everything. And now we do it in Jesus. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, he's saying that he's judge again. He's sitting on the throne. It's God who's the judge. Romans 14, Isaiah 43, I think it is. On and on. Uh, Matthew 8, 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Notice, Peter, Cornelius worshipping Peter. Don't. I'm a man. John's worshipping the angel. Don't. I'm of your brethren, the prophets. Jesus never said, don't. Because <laughs> those one God Jews knew you only worship the one God of Israel. We're going to stop there. I love you. I hope you know who Jesus is. God wants to give you an understanding. Satan tries to blind our minds. But and the God of this world blinds our minds. But uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 4 through 6. But you'll see the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Because he's God incarnate. God bless. I love you in Jesus' name.